Welcome to another video in our video series called Think6, where we discuss exciting aspects of the next generation of wireless communication, aka 6G. In our last video, we explored the use of artificial intelligence and machine learning in wireless communication and learned some basics and fundamentals. Today, we want to explore some initial use cases currently studied by the FreeGPP standardization organization as part of the next release for the technical specifications for, for the 5G new radio standard. So welcome to part two of our mini-series on artificial intelligence, machine learning and future wireless communication. Last time we concluded that it is essential to understand use cases and requirements to determine if the use of machine learning provides a real benefit. With all the hype around artificial intelligence and machine learning, it is important to ask what role will machine learning really play in wireless communication? It's the ultimate question of life, the universe and everything if you allow me to refer to the Hitchhiker's Guide of the Galaxy. And the answer is not 42, by the way. I like to compare the things that are going on with machine learning in wireless communication with the actual fusion process that powers our sun. During nuclear fusion, two hydrogen isotopes, deuterium and tritium, collide at super high speeds to fuse to a much heavier nucleus, that is helium, release a huge amount of energy and one neutron. If we use this analogy, we can replace deuterium and tritium with 5G and machine learning, which fuse to 6G and release some innovation compared to the previous technology. And that innovation may be a revolution of the physical layer, where the complex, very sophisticated, but deterministic algorithms for detection, synchronization, channel estimation, channel equalization and demapping are eventually replaced by machine learning models. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's take a look on what's happening right now for 5G in terms of machine learning. That machine learning models replace blocks in the signal processing chain is and can't be the first step. First, a common understanding and agreement between industry players need to be established, as well as a framework that allows the evaluation, analysis and comparison of results of simulations. This is what is going on right now within FreeGPP. The standardization organizations ran one working group in charge of the physical layer definition, agreed to answer these questions and all surrounding questions by exploring free use cases over the course of the ongoing work in FreeGPP's release 18. There are two study items in release 18. The first one is artificial intelligence and machine learning for the 5G new radio interface. And a second study item on artificial intelligence and machine learning for the next generation RAN. Both study items shall build upon the results from the release 17 RAN free let's study item on data collection for NR and ENDC. According to our standards delegates, this study item that will transition into a work item for release 19, the members of FreeGBP allocated the largest time budget in the long history of FreeGPP. This just marks the importance of this topic, also from a standardization point of view. The official timeline for FreeGPP release 18 foresees the syntax freeze by March 2024, which implies a freeze of the core specification in December 2023. That is roughly a year from now. And as a side note, release 18 marks also the point where we call everything now 5G advanced. And as you can see, there are many more features and functionalities being worked on than just artificial intelligence and machine learning. For the air interface study item, the FreeGPP members agreed on the following three use cases as a basis for their study. CSI feedback enhancements, with the goal of an overhead reduction, improved accuracy and channel prediction. Second, beam management, beam prediction in time and or the special domain, overhead and latency reduction, beam selection accuracy improvement. And last not least, positioning accuracy enhancements for different scenarios, including those with heavy non-line-of-sight conditions. So let us discuss one of these use cases in more detail. Folks that are familiar with the 5G new radio know that the UE estimates the downlink channel quality based on so-called channel state information reference signals, short CSIRS. 
The UE executes channel estimation measurements on those reference signals, such as reference signal receive power, RSRP, reference signal receive quality, RSRQ, and reference signal, uh, signal interference to noise ratio. The estimated SINR, which is based on hardware and underlying software algorithms, is translated to channel quality indicator, CQI. At the same time, the device determines if it can perform MIMO operation or not and reports the results as rank indicator, layer indicator, pre-coding type indicator and pre-coding matrix indicator back to the network. The channel feedback is sent in form of a bit stream in uplink direction with the data channel if there's an uplink transmission ongoing, otherwise via the control channel. Of course, this is only a very high level description. There are many, many details as the CSIRS can be very flexible configured, as you can tell from the ASN1 information elements that I copied here. Yes, it is an eye chart and the idea is not that you read it, but more to show you the flexibility of how to configure these signals and allocate the required resources. The underlying configuration depends on a number of factors, including the hardware capabilities of the infrastructure and that of course is vendor specific. The physical layer specification foresees several configurations depending on the number of antenna ports used and allows different mapping of CSIRS to the time frequency grid. As a result, this leads to varying number of feedback bits depending on the configured CSIRS resources, the reporting modes and so forth, but uh, most importantly of course the conditions on the radio channel and if there are many dominant vectors. The table here, copied from an actual paper published by Samsung, shows and compares the amount of feedback bits based on certain configurations and different 3GPP releases. We can see that this ranges from 351 bits to 58 bits. The second part of the table shows the number of bits required to transmit the same information after being compressed by an autoencoder, which is an unsupervised artificial neural network that learns how to efficiently compress and code data and then learns how to reconstruct the data back from the reduced encoded representation to a representation that is as close to the original input as possible. Let's take a look at the high level principle. So the original idea to compress feedback for channel state information was already explored by several universities and research institutes in China as part of a challenge. A summary of this contest is given in the paper from June 2021, where you find the title and the link at the bottom of this slide. The problem description aligns with the discussion we had a few seconds ago. It is argued that only limited channel feedback is provided based on an extraction from the complete channel state information. However, providing full channel state feedback is an implementation challenge due to the difficulty of developing adequate compression and recovery mechanisms based on using the traditional approaches. What do I mean by that? Well, think about the scenario shown here, top left. There's a transmitter and receiver, multipath propagation on the radio channel where the signal arrives via different paths at the receiver. The term cluster has slightly different definition in 5G new radio than just describing a path but let's leave that out here for simplicity for the moment. The channel metric H is now described by the channel coefficients from the nth transmit antenna, the nth receive antenna and the dth cluster. So in the paper, the provided data set corresponding to the channel matrix at a given time has 24 paths and 16 antenna pairs due to four transmit and four receive antennas. We have then to deal with the real and imaginary parts and coach each sample with 32 bits. That means the full channel state feedback corresponds to a total of 24,576 bits. That's many bits to be transmitted just to provide full channel state information. This is why FreeGPP spends so much effort coming up with techniques and procedures to reduce this overhead. For the mentioned challenge to solve this problem by using machine learning techniques, more than 900 teams registered. The goal of the challenge was to develop an autoencoder that compresses the data so that the receiver can recover the information with a normalized mean square error of less or equal to 10%. 
This table summarizes the overall results. The winning team came up with a machine learning model that compresses the data by a factor of almost 86. That is a fantastic result. And as now FreeGPP is looking into this topic as well, this approach eventually becomes reality. With that, we have reached the end of our second video in our mini series, where we explore the role of artificial intelligence and machine learning in wireless communication and took a look at the initial use cases analyzed by FreeGPP as part of a release 18 study item. Next is to see how a future 60 standard will build upon these definitions and findings. However, this is a topic for another video in our video series called Think6, where we discuss interesting aspects of the next generation of wireless communication, aka 6G.